President Zelensky has said Ukraine needs $7 billion a month to make up for losses incurred as the conflict in the country continues. Well, let's talk now to Dr. Timothy Milovanov, former economic minister of Ukraine and current president of Kyiv School of Economics. Uh, welcome to the program. Thanks so much indeed for talking to us today. Uh, there has, of course, been huge damage already to Ukraine's infrastructure. Can you quantify the kind of cost that's so far been borne by Ukrainians? Yes, we can. Uh, we actually have a project which quantifies the costs, uh, uh, requires video photo evidence and an assessment. And it is currently at $83 billion, only the infrastructure. And this, uh, please, we have to keep in mind that this is the lower bound estimate because we do not have uh, good uh, access to Mariupol, Kharkiv, or even Chernigov and Sumy. Um, therefore, I think uh, it's likely that the real cost uh, of direct losses to the infrastructure are maybe twice that much, if not more. Uh, and we also have an estimate which is done through indirect measures of the total losses to the economy. And they're around, you know, maybe different estimates from 240 to 540 billion dollars. So when you're talking about infrastructure, you're talking about things like roads and hospitals and so on. What about the cost of losing less tangible things like crops, for example? How significant is that? Yes, it's pretty significant. It's not lost yet uh, because we have about 5 million tons of wheat, grain, and we have uh, 10, maybe 16 even million tons of corn. And they're currently uh, basically sitting in different storage facilities in Ukraine. Some of it has been exported to uh, through the western border, but because uh, Russia is blockading Odessa ports and has destroyed Mariupol ports, it's really forcing, you know, the countries which are, clo you know, which rely on this uh, food uh, to, you know, have food security problems. And this is North Africa and Middle East. And when it comes to ultimately making good the damage and rebuilding, do you envisage needing a reconstruction program, a bit like the one we saw after World War II, the Marshall Plan, that helped to rebuild Europe? Uh, correct. Uh, that's uh, what everyone is thinking about. It, and everyone means that the uh, governments, uh, especially in the EU, um, the Ukrainian government, different think tanks, uh, different uh, different institutions. Um, and uh, there are some debates about what needs to be focused, what it needs to be focused on. The, but um, I think people miss one simple point that the risk, the war risk is not going to disappear. It's not going to be like in Germany when the war was over and uh, there was new government and the winners imposed the, uh, the reconstruction project so without any fear that the war will come back. Uh, with Russia, I think it's going to be different. We will have to reconstruct, rebuild as the war will continue to go on, maybe not at the same intensity. Uh, to make it precise or concrete, you know, right now we need to reconstruct or rebuild Bucha, we need to rebuild Borodanka, we need to, to rebuild Bravari, um, and that's happening now, the reconstruction has started. And a cost we haven't talked about, uh, perhaps, would be uh, the cost incurred by people leaving. Do you think there'll be enough people to make rebuilding happen as you would like? Excellent question. Uh, we have been running panel survey analysis, uh, sociological analysis, uh, among people who left uh, Ukraine during this, uh, during the refugee uh, crisis uh, caused by the war. Um, in the first weeks, about 78% of people wanted to come back at the first opportunity. The more recent numbers are slightly lower at 76, 75%. So the large number, the largest share of people wants to come back at any you know, the moment they can. However, um, the people who were undecided, about 10, 12 percent now, they want to stay in Europe or elsewhere. So I think as the time goes on and the war continues, uh, the numbers will be dropping. But I still hope that 60 to 80 percent will come back. OK, Dr. Timothy Milovanov, former economic minister of Ukraine and current president of Kyiv School of Economics, thank you so much for talking to us today.